Hello and welcome to our lesson on solving absolute value equations. This is going to be from section 1.6 from our text. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing you need to know, if your equation has an absolute value in it, the very first step, the first thing you need to do is isolate that absolute value. Once you get the absolute value isolated, then there are three possible outcomes, okay? So the first one says, if your absolute value, uh, and I just use the word stuff because there can be a lot of stuff inside the absolute value, but if that absolute value equals a negative number, you're gonna have no solution, okay? The reason for that is because absolute values always produce positive outcomes. And so what this would actually say, this would say something positive equals something negative, which can never happen. The second outcome is if your absolute value equals zero, then you will have one solution because the only way that an absolute value can produce a zero is if the stuff inside is zero. The absolute value of zero is zero. In that case, you get one solution. And then lastly, if your absolute value just equals a positive number, then you will have two solutions. And we're going to try to cover an example of every possible case here. All right, so let's get started with our examples. And the first example we're going to start with is number 35, which says the absolute value of 4x minus 9 equals 14. Okay, so the first step is to isolate the absolute value. You can see here that the absolute value is all by itself on one side, so it is isolated. There's a lot of stuff inside, but the absolute value is isolated. So step number one is done. Step number two, we notice that it is equal to a positive number. In that case, you will have two solutions. So here's how you find them. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 4x minus 9 equals 14, because if the stuff inside is 14, the absolute value of 14 is 14, and that'll produce a solution. And we're going to say 4x minus 9 equals negative 14. And here's why. If the stuff inside is negative 14, remember the absolute value will make it positive. So the absolute value of negative 14 is also 14, so that'll produce a solution. And now we have two equations to solve. So we're going to bring the negative 9 over for both of these. And that's going to give us 4x equals 14 plus 9. And 4x equals negative 14 plus 9. And then the next step would be combine like terms. 14 and 9 is 23. And on the other one, negative 14 plus 9 is negative 5. Last step, we need to divide both sides by 4. And that's going to give us x equals 23 fourths and x equals negative 5 fourths. And so there you can see we do actually get two solutions. If you want, you can plug those back in and check and make sure that they do both produce positive 14. You can do that. I'm not going to do that in the video. But if you want to plug them back in and check, you can. I'll tell you what you can do, though, to make it a little bit easier. Let's bring up the calculator and check, because the calculator makes it pretty easy. And we do have an absolute value on my calculator. That's going to be shift and open parenthesis for absolute value. Four times 23 fourths 
minus 9. So notice what I've done here is I plugged our first answer in to the variable and then if this is correct when I hit equal it should give 14 and it does and then I can back this up by hitting the back button and the other answer was negative 5 fourths so by editing that and making it negative 5 fourths Again, that would be plugging this second answer in for the variable. That should work out and give us 14, and it does. All right, for our next example, we're going to look at number 53. And this problem says that we have the absolute value of 3x minus 4 equals negative 2. And so in order to solve this, again, we need to check and make sure the absolute value is isolated, which it is. It's all by itself on one side. And then the next step is to say, okay, what does it equal? Well, in this case, it equals a negative number. And remember, any time that it equals a negative number, that's going to be no solution. And so this problem is going to be really short. And there you go. I'm sorry, that's all there is to it. If your absolute value equals a negative number, there's no working it out. That's just the answer, no solution. All right, let's say what? Let's play the what if game. Let's call this 53B. What if it would have been the absolute value of 3x minus 4 equals 0? What would that have looked like? Well, again, the absolute value is isolated. And this time when it equals to zero, you're going to have one solution. And so how would that work? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to take the stuff inside the absolute value and you're just going to set it equal to zero. Because the only way an absolute value can be zero is if the stuff inside is zero. And then we're going to solve for x. So first step, moving the minus four over. That's going to give us 3x equals 4, and then divide by 3, and we're done. 3's cancel, gives us 4 thirds, and that will be the only solution for that problem. And again, you can plug that back in and check it if you want. So, let's pause for a second. At this point, I've shown you how to do the no solution, one solution, and two solutions. Let's look at one more example where you actually have to do some work where the absolute value is not isolated. And that's going to be number 51. So in this problem, we have 10 minus the absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals 4. So if we look at this problem, we can see that the absolute value is not isolated because we have this extra term, this 10, and we have a negative in front of it. So we're going to have to get rid of both of those pieces to isolate the absolute value. And here the first step would be bringing the 10 over. Now this negative is still going to be here. That's negative absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals, now if the 10 comes over, that's going to make minus 10. 4 minus 10 is minus 6. And then to get rid of the negative, really if you want to think about it, that's like an understood negative 1 that's being multiplied by the absolute value. So one way to get rid of that is you could divide both sides by negative 1. Another way that's a little bit faster and takes a little bit less work is to just say, okay, if I want this uh, item on the left, if I want that to be positive, all I need to do is change the sign. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I change the sign on one side, I have to change the sign on the other, and then that takes care of the negative. However you do it is fine. I like the second way. It's a little bit less work. All right, so now we've got the absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals 6. 
the absolute value is now isolated and we can see that it does equal a positive number and so in this case we're going to have two solutions so we're going to say 2x minus 1 equals 6 and 2x minus 1 can be negative 6. You always split that twice, once with a positive 6, once with a negative 6. And then you've got two equations to solve. All right, bringing the minus 1s over. That's going to give us 2x equals 7 because negative 1 becomes plus 1. And then again, we have 2x equals negative 6 plus 1, which would be negative 5. And if we divide both sides by 2, we're going to have our two answers. Okay, so what does x equal? x equals 7 halves and negative 5 halves. Those are the correct answers. Now, there are other correct answers. If you wanted to say, uh, what is that, 3 and a half? 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half, and negative 5 halves is negative 2 and a half. You could give the decimal values. Uh, here, these decimals are exactly the same as the fractions. So these answers are also the exact answers. If it says give the exact value, either one of these would be correct because those are both exactly correct. But if the seven halves and the five halves, if that would have been thirds, and it says give the exact answer, then you would want to leave those fractions because the best you can do if it's divided by three is you can round and get approximate answers. Okay, so there is an example of how to take a problem where you have to manipulate the equation to isolate the absolute value, and then you look and see what it's equal. Let's look at one more that you might run into. Number 57, and that's going to be the absolute value of 3x plus 4 equals the absolute value of x minus 7. Now, in this case, we have two absolute values. So what we notice is that the absolute value is isolated on both sides. Both of the absolute values are by themselves. And so this problem is going to split into two separate problems because positive stuff can equal positive stuff. We just need to know what those values are. So the first time you're going to split it, you're going to say 3x plus 4 can equal to x minus 7. And then the other time you're going to say 3x plus 4 can equal a negative x minus 7. So remember that this value here can equal this number as a positive or this number as a negative. And that's why we split it off twice like that. And now we have two equations to solve. So let's solve the first equation first. Moving the x over, bringing the 4 back. That's going to give us 3x minus x equals negative 4 minus 7. 3x minus x is 2x. Negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. And then if I divide both sides by 2, to get those 2's to cancel, I'm going to have my first answer, which is x equals negative 11 halves. Now, on the other equation, the first thing we're going to have to do is distribute this negative. That'll change the signs. That'll give us 3x plus 4 equals negative x plus 7. And then we can bring the negative x over and the positive 4 back. So... That's going to give us 3x plus x equals negative 4 plus 7. And then I can combine like terms. 3x plus x is 4x. Negative 4 plus 7 is 3. And dividing both sides by 4 is going to give me my second answer, which is 3 fourths. 
and I'm done. And I highly recommend that you take these answers and plug them back in to check and make sure they work. So that's going to do it for this particular lesson. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.